Hi everyone, this is Samantha from The Dancing Soap Dish. I hope you are well. Just take a look at these gorgeous resin ornament molds. These are for resin crafts and they're beautifully detailed molds. Uh, I bought them last year, but I ran out of time to do something with them before Christmas. I did end up using them after Christmas to make these winter themed soaps, uh, which I think did turn out quite well. It took a little bit of imagination to make them suitable as soap molds. And how I did that was actually cut some rings from paper cups and push the rings down into the molds. Uh, and then I filled in the details with some white uh, melt and pour soap base, which obviously sort of cemented the, uh, the paper cup ring into place. And then after that, I was able to put uh, a darker layer to be the background, I chose this beautiful deep blue here and uh, I made lovely soaps, but it wasn't without its downfalls. Um, you had to make sure that the paper cups you used were ones that um, didn't stick to the soap, which I had issues with, because it's hard to tell just by looking at a paper cup if it's gonna work or not. Um, I also wanted to put like a clear layer over the top to make uh, the pattern last a little bit longer. I wasn't able to do that making the soaps that way uh, and also because I used the paper cup they they had a little bit of a sloping bevel on the side which I also wasn't super pleased with so I was looking for a better way to work with these molds and I thought I'd try giving resin tape a go so I have used resin tape before and I thought maybe this time I can use it and a couple of other tools to sort of come up with a way to create a fake wall around these molds so that they're deeper so that I can pour a full bar of soap from them rather than having to do a two-tone effect. Uh, and that is how I came up with today's tweak of the week where I'll be showing you how to use resin tape to make soap from these gorgeous Christmas ornament molds. So let me show you what I have in mind. I wanted to stick the resin tape to the inside of uh, the mold cavity, circular like this. There's not a lot of room there. It's a really small surface, um, but doing so makes the cavity much deeper. And then I'm hoping that the resin tape will hold up so that I can pour a bar of soap inside that without any leakage or too much leakage. Anyway, I'm just gonna do it and, and see what happens. So you start off with a mold this is what it looks like here and you get some resin tape now resin tape is um, adhesive tape um, covered in silicon so it's heat proof and it's non-stick you also need something the same size as the mold I'm going to use this cookie cutter here to use as a guide so you know how much tape to use and uh, I will also be using this bamboo skewer here today you'll see so in a minute that has an important uh, function as well when doing this Okay, so first of all, I'm going to just pull out a piece of tape. Normally it's quite easy to do this, but of course when you turn the camera on, everything goes wrong, but here you go. So I'm getting my tape and I need the sticky side to be facing outwards. So the adhesive side is facing outwards. I'm gonna wrap it around this cookie cutter because I know it's the same uh, size as the inside of my mold. You can maybe make your own guide with a piece of cardboard or something if you don't have something like a cookie cutter that fits. Um, and I'm just going to cut myself a piece of tape that is a little bit longer than what I need so I can overlap it and stick it together. And again I will just wrap it around the cookie cutter and stick it to itself so that I have a ring of tape that is the same size as the inside of my mold cavity. And I, as I said before, I have the sticky side facing outwards. So there we go, and that's the tacky side there. I'm gonna make sure that that's stuck nice and tight. So there we go. And now I'm going to, while it's still attached to the cookie cutter, push it down into the mold and just make sure that it's fitting in there nice and snug, which is quite easy to do. There we go. 
just checking that all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to take the blunt edge of my bamboo skewer and use that to push the tape to the inside edges of the mold just to make sure that it adheres nicely that it's all stuck very well there and then I'll remove the cookie cutter and again just go around here using the bamboo skewer to make sure that the tape is sitting smoothly against the inside of the silicon mold I don't want any gaps because any gaps means that soap can flow out so there we go it's quite an easy process and that's my last one there and now I'm going to try and fill it with soap okay so I've popped these on a tray and I want to make some 50 gram soaps I'm actually cutting up uh, another soap project that uh, went wrong I'm going to uh, reuse this soap uh, again it's a blue color which I know I know I made blue soap last time but I really wanted to reuse this soap so, so that's what it is but instead of being dark blue which is what I used last time I'm actually going to add some titanium dioxide to it and actually try and bring it down so it's a bit of a lighter blue maybe a nice sky blue uh, or something like that there we go give that a good stir um and um what i'm going to do is set this tray on top of my scales so i can weigh out each soap individually i have some isopropyl alcohol on hand too and i'm going to spray the alcohol as i pour very carefully into the bottom here just to make sure that all of that soap goes into uh, the details of the mold some of those details are very fine and very delicate and it's very easy for bubbles to form uh, and ruin the effect so i'm just filling up each mold with a little bit of soap 50 grams in all and uh, spraying alcohol as i go just to make sure that everything there's no bubbles and that everything settles well into the mold if you pour in too much like i did just then you can spoon it back into the jug um, also make sure that your soap stays quite fluid um, i mean we're filling seven molds here which does take some time so in the case that your soap is starting starting to thicken up you may need to pop it back in the microwave like i'm going to do just now and um, just melt it down a bit more make sure there's no lumps in it and that it's not setting because again if it's not fluid it's not going to flow very well into the fine details of the mold and you're going to get missing bits and, and bubbles as well so here we go this is a second last one hopefully i'll have enough soap left to do this one there we go perfect okay so these are set now uh, it's a little while later so i'm going to try and remove the silicon mold so the best way to do this is to just work your way around peeling it back a little bit as you go don't try and rip it off from one side because you'll probably end up bending the details uh, this is still probably a little bit too soft but i want to continue with this video there we go look at that that is beautiful so that soap that i reused it had a beautiful glitter in it so there's a bit of shimmer there uh, that lovely sort of winter scene here uh, let's address the elephant in the room this one here obvious leakage there's a lot of soap that leaked out of the side of this one i must have had some um, places where the resin tape wasn't pushed against the side of the mold um no worries there with the design i thought there might be some holes in it but um yeah it's it's definitely there's a bit of a slope on that because of the the soap that's leaked out all right here's another one this one's coming out quite well here we go it's a nativity scene and uh, like i said the soap is still a little bit soft so some of these finer details here did bend a little bit when i poured the mold off but i can actually just use my finger to just push them back in place and that came out quite well this one here has also leaked but it was just such a small amount i really don't think it's uh, gonna cause any damage or be an issue 
This one is an incredibly detailed, probably the most detailed design of all the molds. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. I thought for sure there'd be some bubbles in there. Um, maybe some of the super fine details are a, a little bit wonky, but that's okay. Uh, only a few left now. What's this one going to be? It'll be a surprise. What's, what have we got left? This one is another winter scene. Oh, that sparkle is just so beautiful. Worked out so well. I love that I'm able to get, you know, the details and a decent sized bar of soap uh, all together in the one bar without having to um, do a double pour, which is great. So there we go. Merry Christmas, everybody. Love that one too. And finally, this last one here, I think is a reindeer. Yes, it is. Beautiful reindeer with those fantastic antlers. Look at that. They're fantastic. Okay, so this one here that had the major leakage, there's a bit of a slope on it. And since the, the bottom here is actually going to be the base because I poured them upside down, I want it to sit level. So I'm actually going to remelt the soap that leaked out and pour it back in, uh, which will hopefully level out the top of this soap. You, the camera can't really see it, but a lot of it's sort of um, settled on one side and hopefully that will fix that one. Okay, while that's setting, I will take off the tape. Uh, I'm keeping the tape because I will be reusing the tape shortly. So uh, don't scrunch it up. I'm just uh, turning it back on itself and putting the little rings in the corner here. Now, these are great bars and it might be the case that you just want to stop right there if you've picked a pretty color and they're looking pretty schmick then just go with that that's a great bar of soap uh but i you know i just have to add a bit of bling add a bit of glitz i can't help myself uh, and what i want to do is i actually want to um, just smarten up the surface of the design with a little bit of mica so I'm going to make myself some mica paint. Uh, I have some vegetable glycerin here and also some isopropyl alcohol. And um, I'm just going to use three different colors of mica. Um, so white, which will be my majority base color. And then uh, I'm going to use a little bit of this, this beautiful sort of light blue teal color here. And then for the highlights, I've uh, got this great sort of violet, beautiful violet color. I just need a teeny tiny bit of that because uh, I won't be using too much. Uh, and I like to mix uh, vegetable glycerin and some isopropyl alcohol into the mica at a ratio of one is to two. Uh, so I just use an, a dropper here, count the number of drops that I put in and um, then double that amount for the isopropyl alcohol um, and then I will give it uh, a mix up I've got some other great tools here I have some uh, lip gloss wands which I find are really good for mixing and brushing on just gives you a little bit better coverage than a paintbrush I find really easy to work with and of course I also have my finger sponges here they are. They're called finger sponges because they fit on the tips of your fingers, but they're just basically uh, little craft sponges that you can use for various craft applications. Um, I'm applying some of my mica paint to the surface of the sponge. That's probably a little bit too thick. I might just soften that up. There we go. I'm also dabbing the sponge onto the paper towel as well to make sure that I just get a nice even coverage there. So I'm going to go round the edge with the white and then I'm just going to apply direct to the soap with my lip gloss wand some of the other colours and use my second um, finger sponge to blend those colours in. So there we go. That turned out quite well. Have a, so that's a really, it's like a pearlescent white uh, and the other colors are shimmery. The camera is not really picking it up, but they are actually beautiful and sparkly. 
And then, of course, you've also got uh, the glitter in the background that was already in the blue soap as well. So these are looking very mid-nighty. They're, um, yeah, looking beautiful and blue and sparkly. A beautiful sort of wintry, wintry colours that I'm using here. So it doesn't take very long to do this. I'm just um, going through each one, applying the soap at random. I normally do white around the edge and then a few highlight colors in the middle, using my finger sponge to blend all the colors in when I've finished. This one, I'm actually gonna do it the opposite way. I've put all the white in the middle to sort of emphasize it that it's a Christmas tree because it's such a busy design, that one. And then I put the color around the outside. And lastly, another beautiful winterscape here. So there we go. I now have to wait for these to dry. They need to be fully dry before the next step. So make sure that paint's not wet or it will smudge. And now I'm putting the tape back on. So this time I'm putting the sticky side of the tape. I'm adhering that to the soap. Um, so it's going on the opposite way that it did before. So some of the tape does have some soap stuck to it, but that's okay because it's actually on the other side. So I haven't even bothered cleaning it off because it's not going to get in my way. Uh, and I, so I said I was going to reuse this tape and I have, and I am just sticking it around the edge of the soap just again. So it will act as um, mold walls uh, for the clear coat that I want to put on top of uh, the mica paint that I just did. So the reason why I want to add a clear coat is it will... Um, preserve the mica paint on the design underneath the clear coat otherwise it'll just wash off the first time you use the soap all the mica will wash off and I just I want it to last a little bit longer than one wash so I like to put it under a layer of clear I'm using 30 grams so the first the blue layer of the soap was 50 grams uh, now I'm putting a 30 gram layer of clear over the top uh, which gives me an 80 gram soap which is um, well over two ounces I've decided to cut down just the, the top here. I was having a little bit of trouble uh, pouring my soap in because the, um, the edges were so high. So basically you make yourself some clear soap. It needs to cool for a bit. If you pour it in and it's too hot, it can melt the fine details. So that's why I'm setting it aside to cool for a bit while I fuss with this one here. Uh, also, when you pour it, don't pour it onto the mica. I'm using the spoon. I'm pouring it onto the spoon and then I'm also using the spoon to direct it into a section of the mold that doesn't actually have any of the mica on it and then just letting it slowly flow over the rest um, of the surface. Uh, so that's the best way to do it. Uh, if it's the soap's too hot, you will melt some of the finer details. You definitely run that risk. Also, if the soap's too hot, you run the risk of smudging the mica. See here as well, I, I had a little bit of burnt soap in there. It, it sort of accumulated as a bubble on, a bit of a smudge bubble on top, and I removed that before I started pouring. So I'm just weighing, I've got these on the scales because I'm weighing out my 30 grams as I go. And there we are. One last one to do. And uh, looking at these, I can see some, I, I have used soap that was a little bit too hot, and some of these are melting. I'll be able to show you at the end. Well, that's all right. They're still gorgeous, but there's a, you know, a bit of a warning to you there about what not to do. Do as I say, not as I do. Oh, there we go. Okay, and that's the final one there. Oh, just had a few bubbles on top there, so I'll push that out. So here they are. It didn't take very long for them to set at all because really that was just a thin layer. The rest of the bar was already set and it was a thin layer of clear. So this is not long after and they've already set. It's very easy uh, just to peel the tape back because of the silicon coat it doesn't stick to the soap it hasn't left any sticky residue it hasn't melted at all because it was heat resistant to the soap while it was melted and it was a hot base and so very easily I'm just peeling this tape back and the result is these fantastic bars of soap which I just never would have been able to get uh, just using you know the molds if you if you just try and use the mold to um make an embed of the design it breaks i tried it 
I tried it many, many times. I tried all different ways. And the details are just so fine. There's no way to demold them without breaking the beautiful details. And, uh, you know, I really love those details. So the key to that is to make sure that, um, you know, they're attached to something substantial. So in this case, a 50 gram bar of soap. When you pull the soap out, all the little fine details won't stick to the mold, they'll stick to the soap, which is, which is what you need. And then I dressed it up with a little bit of shimmer with some white and some teal and some violet mica. And I gotta say, these are looking fantastic. Uh, pictures really not doing them justice. These are beautiful and shiny and shimmery. And I'm, you know, I'm loving the colors. It's, it's very blue, it's like shades of blue, uh, but that's fine. Um, you, you know, the options are endless for these. You could do Christmas colors, gold, silver, white, with any sort of highlight you want could make any color under the sun uh, but these are my gorgeous Christmassy basic round gorgeous ornament soap bars did I say gorgeous I'll say it again they're gorgeous I uh, hope you enjoyed them and I hope you liked our tweak of the week don't forget there's plenty other tweaks that you can view in the special playlist on this channel Thank you to everyone who tuned in today. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you love what we do. And I'll see you next time. Enjoy.